it all comes down to this, the final game of the Cathedral Classic at the Palestra, where Delaware takes on Penn to find out who's going to have an unbeaten weekend here in Philadelphia. Good afternoon, everyone, and alongside Vince Curran, I'm Joe Torty. So glad that you could join us here. Renee Washington will be along on the sidelines shortly. And Vince, we've been looking at this matchup, Jordan Dingle versus Jameer Nelson Jr., two explosive guards who've been on a collision course, and that comes to a head today. Day two of the Cathedral Classic hits the Palestra, where this afternoon Hartford and Delaware tip off the first half of today's doubleheader. Good afternoon, everyone, alongside Vince Kerr and Joe Torty here with you. And Vince, just like The Empire Strikes Back, Aliens, and Top Gun Maverick, sometimes the sequel's just better than the original. We hope that's the case today. Okay. It's the final day of the Cathedral Classic in Philadelphia, where the Palestra plays host to this contest between the Hartford Hawks and the Colgate Raiders. Both of these teams looking to pick up their first win of the weekend. Good afternoon, everyone, alongside Vince Curran, Joe Torty here with you. And Vince, we were talking to Tom Devitt, the Hartford head coach, before the game. He mentioned how much Jared Kimbrough and his LaSalle days and here at Hartford loves playing at the Palestra. Yeah, he said, we're going to tell him no matter where we're playing, we're playing at the Palestra. Dingle, and St. Joseph switches everything. Attacks, pulls up, and hits! Tie game at 74! And Spinoso comes up with the offensive glass again. No look pass for Martz. Pretty play by Spinoso. First field going three minutes for Penn. Backdoor look again, and Brown beats Dingle to the hoop. Slacker, how about that? How about that for Slacker? He can't miss. What a Back to Spinoso. Power dribble and a stuff. Look out, Slacker left open. Three ball. Corner pocket. Maybe a double dribble. Instead, it's Nelson who goes upstairs for the flush. In transition with Monroe on him. Gets it packed by Monroe. No, sir, says the Penn senior. Dribble handoff with Dingle. Steps back. A three for Dingle. Hit and the foul. What a way to get your thousandth point for Jordan Dingle as he heads to the free throw line for 1,001. Penn holds a three-point lead. Two timeouts aside. Both teams will be shooting free throws. St. Joseph's one and one. Pin two shots at this point. Got to be honest with you, Joe. I may go back and watch this game because I've done a lot of, you know, have had a lot of histrionics around the uh, the calls on the foul calls where they've gotten called. Like there have been you? Four, four or five tonight where they said, okay, it's on so and so. And you look at the, you know, so and so is like eight feet away. Right, like that one right there, I don't know how that's not on Jordan Dingle. Right? If you're a St. Joe's fan, that's gigantic. You want to get as many fouls on Dingle as you can. He far and away leads all Penn scorers with 22. Reynolds with 18 for St. Joseph's. Winborn at the free throw line. And you're right about that, Vince, because he's been in foul trouble and still managed to do damage. Winborn, a 59% free throw shooter, the freshman from the Gilman School, product of Baltimore, Maryland, coming off 10 points against USF last Tuesday. Hits a big one there to pull St. Joseph's to within two. One for two, and it's a rebound for Spinoso for Penn. Three and a half minutes left. Penn looking to make it five wins in a row. A lot of road to hoe there, though. Slacker tried to turn the corner. Gets fouled by Wimborn. And Billy Lang cannot believe it on the St. Joseph's bench. I tend to agree with Billy right there. I don't think it was a foul. I think that's a play on. And that's your fifth foul of the night. Yeah, there's nothing there. Wimborn is frustrated with that call. He should be. Right? I mean, come on. Like I get Slackert's the aggressor. I get he's attacking. Right? But, like, Wimborn's just moving his feet. And Slackert's turning the corner. He, he slides a little bit. Slackert doesn't do anything wrong. It's, it's a play on. It's a big play, too, Vince, because you get Wimborn out, who's been a good energy player for St. Joseph's. You send Slackert to the line shooting two free throws in a two-point game. Slackert has hit seven of these. 
Three players in double figures for St. Joseph's. Slackert able to hit the first. Brother Wes plays in the Ivy League at Dartmouth. We talked to Steve Donahue about Slackert and before the game asked, how does his mid-range fit in with the threes and dunks and layups philosophy? And he kind of said what you said last game, Vince, that defenses are adjusting and Slackert's mid-range game is a little bit of a change-up for them. Reynolds for three, too strong. Another rebound for Lucas Monroe. Slackert does a good job on the flyby. I think Reynolds was anticipating a little contact. Dingle gets it blocked. Big time block by Brown. Here comes St. Joseph's. A lot of contact there. And Slacker called for the foul. He's down in a heap as well. That's number four on Clark Slacker, who's up to 16 points. And Slacker looking like he might have knocked knees. They go knee to knee right there. Slacker trying to get it loosened up. Slacker thought he was getting a breather. Steve said, nope. You better loosen that up quickly, Clark. I mean, it is a time when you need your ball handling on the floor, you need shooting. So if Slacker can tough it out, Steve Donahue's going to give him the opportunity to do that. Reynolds hits the front end of the one and one. Six of seven from the line. Seven of eight now. Back to a two-point. Ten lead over St. Joseph's. Dingle backpedaling here. What's the offensive approach if you're Penn in this spot? Keep doing what you're doing. That high ball screen's working. Run things through Spinoso. Nice look. Spinoso yeah, gets knocked go. on the catch. And now he'll head to the free throw line to shoot. I think what, what the fans of the Palestra are a little frustrated with tonight is that there seem to be a lot of late foul calls. Like that, that to me looks like a foul, but there is a delay, there's a pause, and then all of a sudden it's late and everybody's like, well, what's going on here? So now Spinoso, who has struggled from the free throw line tonight. One for five as two Fleming, shots. Fleming picks up that foul. Spinoso hits that one in a big spot. Of course he does. Hasn't looked comfortable there all night and steps up smooth and in rhythm. Knocks the first one down. Unable to get the second. And the lead remains three for Penn. Greer on the attack, spins in. Has Slackert guarding him with four. Reynolds for three. Yes, tie game! as he takes over the game's scoring lead with 23. Well, he said it at halftime. St. Joe's only down seven, and Reynolds hadn't gotten going yet. He certainly has here in the second half. Ultra confident. Monroe steps through, and a foul called. Monroe going to the free throw line. We'll see who this is on. It is on Fleming, so that's five on Fleming. He is fouled out of this game. 